and I can derive value um, at any time from it, depending on someone else sees value in it. And there's just something about having that control in your hands that has a that has that has a value to it than just keeping it elsewhere. And there's actually a term for this, guys. It's called convenience yield, if you want to think about it, um, from a I guess you could say a uh, a nerdy standpoint. So uh, can you see that Silver Slayer? It's yeah. like a, a bunch of Holy images. Crap. So without getting too complicated, this is a formula for the futures price. A lot of us know about silver futures, gold futures, all that stuff. This is the formula to derive the uh, commodity futures price. So as you can see here, F is the futures, S is spot. And then you have Euler's, um, without getting too complicated, that's, you know, whatever everyone knows, it's like the exponent variable. But here you have the risk-free rate at the time. And these are probably, and then you have time here, but these are the two most important parts that I want to talk about because it, 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 it involves storage and convenience. The U is the storage cost per annum as percent of the commodity price. Y is the convenience yield. And there's an inverse relationship between these two is what people have found. As storage levels, um, not necessarily storage cost, but as storage levels come down, you'll find that convenience yields actually rise and vice versa. As storage levels increase, convenience yields drop. And you start to find that the price of commodities uh, react uh, due to that. And the reason why I bring this up is because when you think about a convenience yield, what it essentially is saying is that there is a, there's a value to actually at different times holding the asset. So in the ways that all of us say, hey, you know, if you don't uh, hold it, you don't own it, or if there's a value to actually holding the silver, there's a value to actually holding the gold. And some people may look at you like you're crazy. Well, hey, there's an actual mathematical <laughs> um, formula here that basically says, you're right. There's That's actually crazy. a value to holding the asset. And sometimes it varies depending on different times. Like, no, I'll give people that. But generally, there is a model that looks at the value of actually holding the asset and, and, and um, you can derive value from it at different times. So the interesting thing here is you can take a look Jeez. at the potential for the price of silver and silver shortages and stuff like that based on you looking at this formula. So the futures price could be impacted by the storage levels and convenience yields currently today. You can see that today with the futures price. Long story short, I actually figured out what the current, and, let's call, and this is called the cost of carry, the U minus the Y. I actually figured out what the current cost of carry is. And it's about um, 0 0.048. Currently the silver futures price is at 25.88. Silver spot is at 2566. So currently the cost of carry is about 0 0.048. Why is this important? Because if we ever see the silver futures price go crazy, just out of, out of the ordinary, and the silver spot price is kind of just like chipsing along, but the futures price looks like it's doing crazy stuff, that's how we know there's something potentially going on with the cost of carry. Something's going on with the storage levels and something's going on with the convenience yield. And as the convenience yield gets bigger, it makes the cost of carry smaller. So if we ever see a time when um, the convenience yield or the cost of carry gets very, very low, we know those storage levels are becoming somewhat scarce. So 
it's one of those things that we can kind of take a look at even currently uh, with what's happening with Russia and Ukraine. There's an article here that says, how high could Ukraine crisis push oil prices? And this is one of the ways that we can see it in real time, how storage levels and the cost of carry can impact prices. Take a look at this. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has already driven oil prices above $100 per barrel, which is something we all know. How high, how high they ultimately climb will depend on many scenarios, including how far Russian troops move into Ukraine, whether stricter sanctions are inflicted by the West, how seriously energy flows get damaged in the conflict, and whether Russia halts oil and gas flows to Europe and the U.S., J.P. Morgan Chase reckons that an all-out war could prompt oil flows to drop by 2.3 million barrels per day, boosting prices to $150 per barrel and reducing global GDP by 1.6%. Energy intelligence reckons that a wider Russian invasion coupled with harsh sanctions and Russian energy retaliation could drive prices close to 120 uh, BBLs more severe escalation from this base scenario, like a complete shutdown of Russian supply to Europe, could add in a, an extra $20 um, to that. So here's the most important thing. Even if the Russian operation is limited, the possibility of lingering tensions and a nervous market could keep prices closer to $100 than $90 near term, especially if OPEC plus... Uh, keeps, or especially OPEC plus keeps struggling to meet its production quotas. Part of that reflects a higher convenience yield. That is the marginal benefit of holding an additional prompt barrel in times of higher geopolitical uncertainty. So there is a benefit of holding the asset when there isn't that, or when there's a potential of not having it because of storage levels. 